because they got run games. The really good teams do both. Last thing, is it fair to say that back when you were at OU, the Ohio State's quarterback play for Ohio State is a passing team, so, not have scared you? So, well, it's different. Man. Coach Trestles is one of the all-time great coaches, but, 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 but we, we, I played them in his first year here. So the next year, the kickoff game was in Texas Tech, in the shoe. And it was a Saturday for everybody to play. And, and we practiced that morning. We're going to go in. And coach said, hey, let's go watch our boy Leecher play. I said, coach, said, we're going to power 50 times today. I said, trust me, we're going to run the power 50 times. I didn't know the player was going to be the guy, but I knew they were going to run the power 50 times. He called me out. He says, my God, they're halfway there. I said, yep, we're going to run the ball. And that was their style. Um, so I, I, whether they scared you or not, what they did is they made they had great receivers for David Boston, all these guys. And they made plays like Terry Glenn. I remember putting Terry out of high school myself. I mean, they had playmakers. But again, that, that was that was the style of the game back then, and that was the style of the league. And then over time, you know, the league has evolved. But it's still a line of scrimmage league in the Big Ten. It's a physical league. We're playing Georgia. They have phenomenal talent, but they're a line of scrimmage team. National championship games. We still have the passing, the great quarterback play, the great receivers to win championships. It's still a line of scrimmage game, and you got to be good in both up there on both sides. Thank you, Coach. A few minutes ago, you talked about Georgia's defense got to get a little bit of eye candy. What? How did that present a challenge to you? Is that a challenge to you guys as play callers? Is that a challenge? Is that like all the uh, uh, players that once the ball snaps? Or when is that a creative problem? Well. The, 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 the problem in play calling is really the planning of when you put something up, it's got to work against multiple things because you're maybe not sure what you're going to see. So you can draw a play and say, hey, they let up here, this is a great play. And it is 40% of the time when they're in that defense. But when these three other fronts come in, you're running uphill or you're, you, don't have a, you don't have a hat on that guy in protection or you don't have a great route progression as you're going through the route game. So their, their multiplicity causes you to be very calculated in what you you want to attack the team, but it's got to work against multiple looks. For the players, then it's their ability to adjust quickly. Goes okay, like they actually will stem their front one bit, go from here to here. So you know they'll show one blitz, check to another blitz. They'll show one coverage and roll to another coverage. So it'll be very challenging for the players as the ball is snapped, pre and post snap. For the for the play calling, it's really done on the front end where you're calculating what you can do. Because they and they got great players and they, they challenge and make it hard. You just it's not like it's a no, you know, it's a buffet here. You know, you just pick them all. And they, you got to be very calculated in what you're doing. And Marvin mentioned Daniel Bell. Lights got to come on for him. He's got to take that next step. What have you seen out of him in the last month or so? Yeah, I don't know. I think this year he, he maybe was was you know, in the mix, playing a little bit more, practicing a little bit more. And I think maybe hit a little bit of that midseason wall. Where a year ago, you're not playing much, and all of a sudden, now all of a sudden, even though he's not maybe playing the games, the practice volume and the demand and expectations of what you got to bring on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday practice, and week after week, and keeping your body healthy. So uh, I think just coming off, I think he's got a breath of fresh air. It is his time. A lot of players in our place uh, have a lot expected of them, uh, social media, and media wise, and family wise. So sometimes it takes one or two years to really get to where you need to be. I think he's kind of trending where he needs to be. Unfortunately, sometimes if it doesn't happen fast, you, you think you're failing. Or you, sometimes it just takes time of stacking up days. So he was he was having a really good season. I think he hit a little bit of a wall, which I think is kind of normal with his position and physicality and maturing. I think he's on the back side of that wall and he's showing some good signs. He'll need to have a great off season and do a lot to, because he needs to be big in the mix as a state of Georgia. Coach, how important is it to recruit the state of Georgia? Um, one, you got you know, great population, great athletic base. Uh, you got kids academically come out of very strong schools. Uh, I just think that here you got a lot of good families, a lot of good people. You got kids that are used to, they're used to discipline, being held accountable. Uh, we we're fortunate enough, I was here to get assigned with the this year. Right here on the south side of town, I recruited him hard. I thought he was a special player. Uh, but I remember watching those guys pray. I loved the way his team practiced. I loved his high school coach and watching him and his coach. Like this is good football. And I think it's it's it, for us. It's not that far away in Ohio. Uh, it is great ball, well coached, structured. Uh, this this is a great football state. It's.